Uh, I'm here and we're going to be going over some of the questions that you sent to Dr. King. Dr. King is traveling right now, so for the question answer section, Chris and I are going to be doing that. He'll be asking the questions and then I will be answering them. Here's one question. Dear Dr. King, I am aspiring to work as a medical laboratory scientist in the USA after completing my bachelor in medical laboratory science here in Tanzania. What are the criteria I should fulfill so that I can qualify for this post? That's a good question. According to Dr. King, uh, medical laboratory scientists uh, have to have a baccalaureate degree and then have completed an accredited medical laboratory science program. While you're in college, you're going to take classes in mathematics, chemistry, and biology. These accredited programs may be located within a hospital system or in a university. And then after graduating, the medical laboratory scientist must also pass a certification exam. She also sent some other information to give you more details, but I'm going to post that. Thanks. Here's another question. My second question, is AED meant to replace CPR? Is there a way that we can offer defibrillation manually without using the AED machine? The question here is, does AED replace CPR? Well, according to Dr. King, the answer is no, it does not replace CPR. It should be used in conjunction with CPR if a person is non-responsive and is not breathing. A defibrillator gives an electric shock to the heart. Defibrillators can be manual. Usually a trained medical person, such as a physician, uses manual defib defibrillators because they control the amount of voltage supplied, as opposed to using one that's automated, which has the standard voltage applied. Doesn't the use of AEDs on infants have effect in the long run, considering the fact that the amount of voltage for each shock is high? Now, standard AED pads should be used on children eight years old and above. Uh, there are pediatric AED pads that can be used for children younger than eight years old because children require a lower level of energy to defibrillate the heart. I noticed in the lecture it was mentioned to seek medical help immediately if a child is stung by a scorpion. My question is, does scorpion venom affect children more intensely or in different ways than other kinds of venom, such as from bees? Um, scorpions and bees can both cause anaphylaxis if the child has an allergic reaction which can be deadly. If any of these signs appear, seek immediate medical attention. Wheezing, trouble breathing, swelling of the tongue, lips, face, hives, fainting, nausea, dizziness, or loss of consciousness. Dr. King, I always get confused on bee and wasp bites. Some people apply ash on the sting area and we know that ash is basic in nature. So what is the difference between bee and wasp in terms of the nature of the venom? Is ash a good medication for bee or wasp bites? Look at the difference between the venom in bees and the venom in wasps. They are different and they contain distinct major allergens which are well defined. I'll put the names of them in the comments below here. Um, the thing to remember though is that patients allergic to wasp venom are rarely allergic to bee venom. I would like to know how first aid is given to someone who's been bitten by a dog. If the bite's already bleeding, apply a clean cloth to the wound and gently press down to stop the flow. Then wash it with water and soap and follow up with an application of antibacterial ointment and cover it with a sterile bandage. All dog bite wounds, even minor ones, should be monitored for signs of infection until they're completely healed. You also need to confirm if the dog has had its rabies shots. If this can't be confirmed, you should seek medical attention for possible rabies. And I also encourage you, if you would like, to email her directly to say hello and to uh, ask other questions or just to create a contact with her. She's delighted to talk to any of you. Thanks a lot.